So a couple of days ago, I saw this post from one of my former university instructors inviting students to avail of the school's Cerebe Center's new 3D technology services like laser cutting, 3D printing, 3D scanning, motion capture, and all that cool stuff. My first reaction was, what the hell does Cerebe mean? School is really informative, boy. <laughs> Anyways, after a few bad tries at trying to figure out what the acronym stands for, another question came to mind. Like why was this not available back when I was a student there? This is certainly some hoopla man. I spent so many sleepless nights making 3D models and cutting my fingers off and now students could just print out scale models and prototypes with a click of a button like magic. And that's when I realized that technology sure has come a long way since I was an architecture student and I'm glad that these amazing 3D services are available to the students. Which is why today I'm going to teach you guys the basics of how to take a digital 3D model and 3D print it with a physical 3D printer. Okay, so before we begin, the 3D printer we are going to use is the Ender 3 Pro, which according to a lot of videos and forums that I have visited, is the best budget 3D printer out there in terms of price to performance. With that being said, let us begin. The software we are going to use to create and export our 3D models is SketchUp but you can use any software you want as long as it can export .stl files. And for the purposes of this video, I have already made some 3D models ahead of time. So in the short time I've spent experimenting with 3D printing, I picked up a few tips and tricks that help me save time and effort when 3D printing. So the first tip is to divide your 3D model into manageable parts. So instead of printing a whole house, you can instead print the walls separate from the floor, the roof, and the furnitures. The way this is gonna help you save time is let's say it takes about five hours to print your whole model if you did not divide it but if you divide your model into five parts it takes one hour each part now for example you didn't divide your model and decided to just print it in one go so you're printing and it's going well and BAM after four hours of printing your 3d printer just suddenly turns off or worse your 3d print just pops off the platform so basically you just wasted four hours of your life but if you divide your 3D model into 5 parts and let's say you successfully printed the first 3 parts and then 30 minutes into printing part 4 it just fails so you just have to reprint part 4 so basically you just wasted 30 minutes because parts 1, 2, and 3 that you have just printed are still very usable Okay, so tip number 2 is to orient your prints properly So the way a 3D printer works is it prints from the ground up So when you orient your 3D model on your build platform make sure that you minimize overhangs. So let's take my model I made here for example. If I print this the right way up, then the printer is going to have a hard time printing this A-frame right here since it will be at an overhang in these sections right here. So just imagine it like this. Is the printing material supposed to just float in mid-air like magic? I don't think so. So it is going to require supports underneath when 3D printing and that will cost you some time and printing materials. So instead of printing it like this, we can just rotate the whole model so that it lays flat on one side, therefore minimizing our overhangs. Okay, so now that you guys know those tips, let us get back to exporting our model. So when exporting our model, I suggest that you guys export your parts separately. So a super lazy shortcut I do is I just delete the items I don't want to export, then export the model with its corresponding part name. Then after that, I just press Ctrl Z to undo the delete then I just do the same process for all the other parts of my model. Okay, so let's do that. Delete these other parts. Then let's go to the file menu. Then click on export. Then select 3D model. So just select stereo lithography file or STL. Then just make sure you set in your desired file location and just export it. And bala wala bing bong, you now have your STL file. So before you can 3D print this STL file, we are going to have to convert it into a G-code file. And in order to do that, we are going to need a slicing software. So my slicing software of choice is the Ultimaker Kura software. This is by far the simplest and most complete free 3D slicing software available out there. And I also love that it is pretty straightforward. Okay, so after installation, Kura is going to ask you to add a printer so just click on add a non-network printer and select what 3d printer you are using in our case we are going to select reality ender 3 and after that it is going to show you the machine settings so just skip that part then click finish and we're done okay so now you can import your stl files into kura 
All you have to do is to click this folder icon on the upper left side, then just locate the STL file that we saved a while ago and import. Okay guys, so I forgot to mention this when I recorded the video a while ago. Anyways, if your model in SketchUp was drawn in a 1 is to 1 scale, then the 3D model you imported into Kura is going to be super giant and you are going to have to scale that down. So in order to scale down your 3D model in Kura, all you have to do is to click on your 3D model, go to the toolbar on the left hand side of Kura, and then select the scale tab then just change the percentage of your scale so in our case we are going to make this a 1 is to 100 scale model change the 100% into 1% press enter and BAM it is now scaled down also I forgot to mention how to navigate your 3d model here at Kura so in order to move your model around you just have to click the middle mouse button to move your model around like so then in order to rotate your model just use the right click button like so and then to zoom in zoom out just use the scroll wheel in and out like so and that is how to move your model around in Kura now let's move on to selecting a setting for your print so to change your print settings you can click on this drop down menu on the upper right hand side then click on custom and under profile I just select standard quality which is 0.2 millimeters anyways I basically leave this profile untouched the only settings I change is the build plate temperature, the build plate adhesion, and the supports. Okay, so firstly to change the build plate temperature, let's just go under materials, and then let's change the build plate temperature to 60 degrees. Cause you know it is a bit chilly where I live, so a hot build plate ensures that your print doesn't warp or you know, pop off the platform when the layers cool unevenly. Okay, now that we've got our temperatures down, we can move on to our build plate adhesion. So what this build plate adhesion options do is they provide some platform for your model so that it sticks to the 3D printer bed. There are three main types of build plate adhesions. The most secure type but most time consuming is the raft. So basically it builds a raft under your model. So I use this for models where there's very little contact between my 3D model and the build plate just like this roof model we have right here. So as you can see, there's very little surface area that will stick on our build plate. So if we select the raft option, Kura will generate a raft around the area where our model is touching the plate, therefore making the surface area of contact bigger and will essentially make our 3D print stick to the platform better. So another time-saving tip I like to do is I like to adjust the raft settings or the perimeters of our raft. So if you guys could see right here when we slice the model, our raft is pretty big and our printing time is 46 minutes which is a little too long for a model of this size so in order to adjust our raft settings just go to our printer settings on the upper right hand side of Kura then go to search settings and then just type in raft click enter then a bunch of parameters for raft settings is going to appear so under raft extra margin as you guys could see there's like 15 millimeters of extra margin for the raft so that is the distance in between our model and the edge of the raft. So there's 15 millimeters. So I like my raft extra margin to be a little bit smaller. So let's say 3 millimeters. And bam, as you guys could see, our time has been reduced by roughly around 15 minutes. So it is now 31 minutes and our raft is now smaller. Therefore, we are going to deal with less material waste. Anyways, future Leon out. <laughs> Moving on, the second most secure type is the brim. But in my experience, it is the hardest to remove. So... I tend to avoid this one in general. And the last type is the skirt, which is kinda useless cause it doesn't contact your model at all. But this is good for getting rid of excess material that is on your printer nozzle since it will do a print around your model and thus it will wipe off excess material from your 3D printer nozzle. Okay, now on to the last setting, we have the supports. So for the supports, just click the generate support tick box and then under support placement, select everywhere. So when you do that, Kura is going to automatically generate the supports for you. And now that you guys have those settings down, we can pretty much get on with slicing, which is this button on the bottom right corner of our screen. Okay, so let's just press that and Kura is going to automatically process our model. So once it is done processing your model, it should display the estimated time of printing and how much material is going to be used. Now before I save this, I like to always click on the preview tab just to see if Kura sliced my model correctly. So let us just click that. Once we click that, there will be a slider on the right hand side of the screen. So the number indicated on the slider is how many layers our print will be. Okay, so if we try to drag this slider, it will show you a section of each layer 
And as you guys could see, the first four layers of our print will be dedicated to the raft that Kura has generated for us. Now for example, we go to layer 16. And if you take a look at the bottom part of our screen, there is a play button. So if we click that, it will show the path of our 3D printer's nozzle when printing this specific layer number. What's up guys, Future Leon here back at it again with additional tips that I forgot to mention when I recorded a while ago. Anyways, as I mentioned a while ago, you have to orient your 3D print in order to minimize overhang. So as you guys could see, there's like a ton of overhangs with our 3D print right here. So all we have to do is we got to rotate our model so that one of these faces right here sits on the platform, thus minimizing the overhang. So in order to rotate your model, all you got to do is to click on your 3D model again, and then go to the toolbar on the left-hand side, click on the Rotate tab, and then three circle thingamabobbins are going to appear. So you could either drag those circle thingamabobbins, like so, in order to orient our model properly, or there is a shortcut, so let us just undo that. Go back to our Rotate toolbar, and then click on Select Face to Align to Build Plate. So click on that. And then click on what face you want to be lying down on your build plate. So we'll click on this face and BAM! It is automatically going to orient that face of your model perpendicular to our build plate like magic. And that's it. Future Leon out. Anyways, that's pretty much all you guys need to know about slicing. Now just click on the lower right button to save to removable drive. Or you could just toggle this arrow to save into a specific file location. Now all you got to do is to save it into your micro SD card. So once saved, your file should have a G-code file type, which is the file type that is compatible for most 3D printers and CNC machines out there. So now depending on the 3D printer available to you guys, the 3D printing process should be as simple as inserting the micro SD card into the 3D printer, locating your file on the printer's interface, and hitting print and you're done. Easy as coconut pie. And with that knowledge imparted upon you, Arky Squad members, I'm afraid I must end the video right here. Also, if you guys are wondering why I wasn't able to upload last week, I was feeling a bit under the weather. I actually thought that I had the coronavirus, but I didn't because I'm all cured now. Anyways, I will see you guys on my next video. Flying peace! And cut. <coughs> oh god, my cough is back.